Hey y'all, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. Okay, I kind of wanted to wait um, a little bit before I talked about uh, this sad, another senseless killing in the hood. What are Ms. Asher Dome? better known as Nipsey Hussle. Um, you know, it's really interesting. I'm just coming from one straight point of view. It's how we don't want to take responsibility for how fucked up we are in this community. And then we got people out here who are old enough to know better that want to shame us for holding us accountable for our bad behavior. Let me tell you something. When are y'all going to understand what has happened to us? A people who have been turned upside down, inside out, who have been taught to hate ourselves. Like when Willie Lynch said, we will be perpetually miserable. I keep saying it. Perpetually. Do y'all know what the fuck that means? It means forever. Forever, forever miserable because of this indoctrination and training that we finna give these black people that we call our slaves. So hundreds of years from now, maybe even thousands of years, well, hell, America's a little over 500 years old, what? And you can see in a little over 200 years, 400 years old, you can see how deep the self-hatred goes. Um, in, the, in the armed services, they call it friendly fire. Hmm. Is that what we going to call it? Or are we really going to have to deal with our emotional and mental instability, our evilness, and our um, socially engineered behavior. Who is going to be man enough or woman enough to address this and stop making freaking excuses? Because I'm sick of it. Nipsey shouldn't be dead. He's doing. She was doing too much for the hood. He was doing too much for his community. But at the same time, Nipsey knew. He knew what he was into. In fact, one of the best interviews I think I've seen with him was when he was interviewed by Rosenberg and Evo, and I can't think of the, the woman's name, but he talked about gang culture. And I think that's what, you know, he talked about how it wasn't until he went to Africa and came back and he had like two people on his shoulders. One that that was still allowing him to gangbang because his mama was from South Central, but his dad was from Eritrea. So he had a chance to go home and he had a chance to have the knowledge of self because that's so important. Because once you have the knowledge of self, it changes you internally. And he brought it back home with him. However, he had he knew in the war in the zone that they allow for black people to be successful in the hood young entrepreneurs you're not going to get a business loan you're not going to get um you know the capital that you need when you have a business mind you don't have the resources that you need so we do what we know how to survive to struggle to hustle and that's why thus you have nipsey hustle and he was a good hustler. And so was his brother Samuel. So was this, that's what they from. And it didn't hurt that their father was from Eritrea. Because um, he also knew the value of hard work. And you could see he showed it to his sons. The fact of the matter is nobody wants to give credit that they lived amongst people who hate themselves. Who didn't have the ability to go to Eritrea. 
or to know how socially engineered as a group of people we really are. And so when Nipsey told that story about, he said, listen, he said, in this gang banging shit, when, when somebody do something to somebody, we don't go looking for a square guy that's walking down the street. We don't go looking. We look for somebody that's looking just like us, who got the same swag as us, um, maybe a different color, but somebody that is in that set, we can tell, and we go and we kill them, and we let it happen, whatever's supposed to happen. He put in his work, because he realized that in order to get somewhere, sometimes you have to put in that kind of work. I'm not saying that kind of work, but that was the only alternative that he felt he he had to dance in. And the unfortunate part about it is everybody wants to make it about Dr. Sebi. And I'm saying to myself, you know, we love as black people these all these conspiracy theories, and we gotta stop this. We have to stop the crazy stuff that think these people, you know, these governments don't have to hide nothing from us. Hell, we're prisoners of war. What the hell make y'all think that they got to hide shit from us? They own us. Lock, stock, and barrel. The sad part about it is we don't want to admit it. Trade us on Wall Street. They own us. Okay? And it's hard for us to deal in reality. But in fact, they own all of us. Okay? It's a colorless process, actually. Because they trading everybody's social security on Wall Street. It's just that white people are stupid. And that's just part of the work of the devil. To make you feel separated. <laughs> but they doing it to us all. We're all slaves. Basically. But. to get Not to get on the soapbox. But for y'all to sit back and make it all this stuff. After all this killing. You see that go on every single day. In the hood. That's why it's so important to weed these fuckers out. And we'll get them on the right page. Either the gangbangers have got to has got to protect us as a community, or they got to go. See, this is what has to happen. We got to have enough of us on the same page that can say, listen, I know it's it's a whole different message. It's a whole different way of life out here in these streets. But just like y'all protect the authority, that's how uh, protect your domain is how you gotta protect the community. It's mandatory. There's no way that should have happened to Nipsey. He wasn't protected. He felt is that comfortable. It was his establishment. He was sitting in front of it, hanging out like he always do. But the other side of the coin is you you moved up just a little too much. You can't be a nominated for no Grammy Award and be sitting right there and still hanging out and don't think it's going to come back at all. And, and But with that being said, because in this particular incident, I, in my opinion, because we can't handle our emotions, and I talk about it all the time, most black people don't even, don't even understand that they only got two emotions. They only got happy or mad. Oh, no, I would say three. Happy, mad, or sad. There is a conglomerate of emotions that people can feel. There is an, uh, an enormous, matter of fact, it's about 26, but we get caught in three. Happy, anger, or sad. And because we haven't processed our emotional health very well, I could very much see Nipsey being embarrassed. I mean, um, him embarrassing the young dude. When they, they said that's his brother. They roll together. They in the same game. They grew up together. Okay, so well, one thing about us, I know we can't take embarrassment. So if somebody will call us out on our shit, and instead of being embarrassed and dealing with those feelings, standing in them, knowing that we not can't come around no more, or whatever those feelings bring inside of us, no, we'll come back because we embarrassed by all the people out here, 
and go and come back and kill somebody. Because that's what happened. He left and came back. Because he was mad. He was humiliated. Yeah. I mean, I've heard it. Listen. I can tell you about plenty of times. When I can say plenty, but a few times I've been sitting up in a bar or a club. And this will stop me from going out. And this was 20 years ago. Yeah, maybe 20 years ago. Um, where somebody get kicked out. Or somebody is told to go home, go away. And they come back and shoot up the club. Y'all ain't never heard no shit like this. Don't act like you ain't. It's the same thing. The person can't handle that rejection. They can't handle being told what to do. They feel now less than. And because they don't know how to process all the emotions in between happy and mad, they go on the war path. And that's a mental health issue as well. So the hood is very dangerous. That's why I always repeat my brother Gat Turner. The hood's a graveyard, a straight up cemetery full of walking corpses that talk obituaries. That's it. People say Nipsey should have got out the hood and this, that, and out the hood. And we have to hold us accountable to where we live. This is why we're open game to be target practice for the dominant society. Because nobody likes nobody that don't like they self. Nobody respects anybody that don't respect they self. Now tell the truth. Look at it in your own life. Don't lie. Very few of y'all are empathetic enough to see somebody being dogged out and then you don't dog them out too. Because in the streets you say, if you see a fool, bump his head. You say it all the time. So y'all know who it, who it is and what it be. And the fact that you would act like um, it's some kind of tra uh, um, some kind of conspiracy as opposed to taking full accountability to what goes on here and there's an element in our community that just got to go. You see that he was trying to, I'm talking about Nipsey now, was trying to, if he knew he couldn't eradicate gang violence, but he knew he was part of the problem at one point. Karma is a bitch as well. And, you know, I wish he worked for me. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, son. You know, I know that back in September and back in December, there was gunplay um, 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 at the store, out there in that mall. Um, I just think that Nipsey kept it, kept it too real. And we have too many people that are full of jealousy and envy as well. And who don't know how to process emotions, who are emotionally retarded. Who have been through no fault of, their, of our own. I don't, when I say these things, I don't want you to think I'm blaming you. It's through social engineering. That's why I say it's a battle for our minds back. Otherwise, we're going to self-destruct. And I wish you could go back and listen to that rap song one of the earlier with KRS and all the pioneers of rap. We're headed for self-destruction. We're headed for self-destruction. Self-destruction. You're headed for self-destruction. It is a point a man wants to die. But what's more important is how are we going to live? And Nipsey did a lot of living in his short time on earth. More than a lot of us in longer periods. My heart goes out to his mama, his daddy, his brother, Laura, um, his other uh, daughter. Um, what's the other lady, young lady's name? Um, his daughter's mother, Tanisha. Or I, my heart goes out to y'all. Because not only did they take y'all husband, y'all father, your ex, 
your brother, your son. And they took away a good man. A man who had learned from his mistakes, not just sat there and learned, but he began to physically make the move to reconciliate. And he did reconcile. He was employing the same people that he had once ran around robbing with. <laughs> or doing his dirt with. I can't necessarily say that. But doing his dirt with, whatever that was. To, to the same spot. To going back and owning the spot. Nipsey, I salute you. May you rest in power. It's such a waste. But although we loved you and saw your potential, God loved you best. The universe loves you. And let your death be an example of how we have we're in trouble. We're in trouble. We're sick and we're in need of a doctor. Somebody to break this cycle of curse, of pain, body. This cycle of self-destruction. This cycle of self-hatred that we have upon ourselves. I pray for everybody in the community. I pray for LA. I pray for all the mothers who lost children all over the world. But more specifically in Los Angeles, and even more specific <sighs> to Armias Ashton, born August 15, 1985, and deceased. The sun set on him on March 31st, 2019. Such a young brother. I pray for his children. And I pray for us as black people because we got some rough days ahead. Either we're going to continue to do this and uh, make ourselves subject to <laughs> friendly fire. Or we're going to rid ourselves of this self-destructive element that's including, that's, in, that's infiltrated our community and has taken away our champions, our men folk. Our real kings, our real leaders, and ones that can do some good for us. Who have been socially engineered to the point that they're feeding off us. It's only a matter of time before they come for us. We got some decisions to make, y'all. But it starts with self-responsibility and taking responsibility and being able to admit what you don't want to face. And that is that we're self-destructing. And we kill ourselves because we hate ourselves. And we're full of envy and jealousy, drugs and alcohol. Some of us have taken pills as kids, have taken Ritalin, Depakote, all kinds of psych drugs. And sometimes we how somehow we gotta get back to what's healthy. That being said, if you like what you hear, like, subscribe, and share. Rest in power, dear son. Rest in power.